Pleased to have, uh, and I'm very happy, and I want to thank everybody for showing up. I'm pleased to have been invited to speak. And yes, this is my first public speaking uh, engagement since I was a young uh, lad, and I was in church and actually uh, presented a talk in front of the congregation when I was a kid and lived at home with my mom and dad. However, I want to welcome you aboard. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, for the last two years now, uh, a lot of you in the crowd here, uh, a lot of you that will be listening on the internet after today that didn't get to show up, those of you that will be seeing this on Google, you've had your middle fingers in the air, and I know there's children here in the audience, I want to keep this as, uh, as clean as possible for the children, but in a form of, of lawful dissent, uh, everyone in here has had their middle finger in the air basically to the establishment and to the media for uh, for a good long time. And those of you that have been along with Revere Radio Network, you have had your middle finger in the air as well uh, to the establishment. And I would hope that you stick it up in the air right now and just say you're not going to take it anymore. Uh, especially from the mainstream media, those that uh, tell one side of the story, those that I, if, I'm, if I'm not at work and I'm in the van and I'm listening to the marching orders that are coming across the radio waves to the everyday people here in the United States of America, every single one of the hosts, Sean Hannity, Michael Savage, Bill O'Reilly, all of them, they're reading the same, they're reading from the exact same playbook, from the exact same speaking points, they're reading the exact same news articles every day. I want to thank all of you for, uh, uh, number one, I want to thank Jenny, uh, Radio Free Oklahoma City, uh, the Book Beat and Electric Chair Gallery for having us here today. Number one and most importantly, I mean, this is so important for me to be here today and to be able to speak with you. And what even makes me even happier is the fact that uh, when all of this was in its you know early planning stages for Conspiraton 2006, I was asked what I thought would be. Uh, a good flyer or a good catchphrase or something. They wanted me to contribute to it. And I did come up with the theme that this particular conspiraton is supposed to be based upon, which is DNA. Is it in your DNA? DNA. D stands for dissent, uh, N for nonviolence, and A for activism. And these are some of the most important things that we need to hold on to today. You just sat here, those of you that have been here uh, since earlier today, sat here and watched. Uh, Loose Change, second edition. And uh, when you watch this movie, since 9-11, put it this way, since 9-11, our right to free speech and our right to dissent and question our own government has been taken away from us. It really, truly has. Those of us who have been, uh, that speak out and that dissent, we've seen uh, that they're, per they're persecuted in many, many different ways. And each and every one of us have from losing family members, loved ones, and friends, uh, and associates, uh, right down to we've seen people who have actually have been arrested and taken to jail and have been imprisoned for putting out information such as the conspiracies with the IRS and things of that nature. Uh, dissent is a very important, very, very important part of this, I like to call it a subculture. I'm not here as part of the 9-11 truth movement. I'm not here as part of any truth movement. I'm here as part of a subculture of like-minded people who believe that there are, in fact, conspiracies among us today and elite people who I will refer to for the rest of my time up here with you today as conspirators. Because that's exactly what they are. And here today, we are here to try to expose these conspirators for what they are. And now, in order to do such a thing, normally you would need a free speech permit, or you would be locked in a free speech zone to say such things, or hold up a sign uh, stating your opposition to anything, whether it be the war in Iraq, the, uh, the war on drugs, the war on terror, I, I mean... It, it, we can get into all of this in just a bit, but dissent, nonviolence, and activism. All of you ought to be proud of yourselves for being here today. You are here, you're dissenting in a nonviolent manner, and you should consider yourselves activists. Because what would anybody else, a normal, I mean, you are normal, 
I'm not saying you're not normal, so don't take it that way. But a sheeple, what would a sheeple be doing today at, at, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday afternoon when the Big 12 championship is happening? They're down at the Blue Bayou watching Oklahoma State and Nebraska. That's what they're doing. You folks are here today because you care about yourselves, you care about your family, the future generation, and this country. So it's very, very important for us to remember that no matter how many times that you're put down or, or, or told that uh, by dissenting and by not going along with the everyday uh, propaganda that's put across the, the mainstream media to us, uh, is is non-patriotism. It, it, it's non-patriotic is what we're told. But in fact, it's the most patriotic thing that you could ever do. It, it's the most patriotic thing you could ever do. Now, you may not, I mean, you clap for me now, but you may not agree with everything that I have to say here today. Just like I, I, I may not agree with everything that I hear today. And I'll give you a good example. You watched the nice intro that the Louder Than Words guys did for Conspiraton. I don't agree with them that we need to uh, put our faith in this new democratic establishment that's been put upon us now that the Republicans have so-called lost the election and the Democrats are in power and there needs to be a new investigation. No, what it takes is each and every one of us to not be afraid, to not back down, when we're put in the predicament of, of, of dissenting and told that you hate America. I'm told that every day. I'm told that I hate America. But my whole purpose for doing what I'm doing, my whole purpose for flying all the way from Tampa, Florida to come speak in front of you guys is because I love America. It's not because I hate America. It's because I love America. Uh, I, so dissent is such an important part of this subculture and if, you just, if, if you're not dissenting, then you're not doing anything. The, our, the culture in general here in the United States, whether you agree with me or not, we are lazy people. And, uh, and there's a lot of people that, that take in this information, but they don't do anything with it. That's why it's so important and it's imperative that you get the information, the books, you read the books, what do you do? You pass it along to somebody else, put it in their stocking for Christmas. The books, the videos, the whole nine yards, all of this. When I get home from Oklahoma City and I get back to Tampa, I'm going to have all of this video and I'm going to upload it to Google Video. My goal is to get it out to as many people as possible so that hopefully they can see and, and, and open their eyes to what is going on today. Uh, there's an artist that did the art on the walls here today, Jeff. And I mean, these pictures, if you, if you actually look at those, these pictures and you see the artwork that he's done and what the symbolism behind it is, I mean, you see the pyramid with the capstone removed back there, and, and, and right behind it, you have this buxom blonde who is selling you this new world order theology that is being presented to you with, I mean, there's so much symbolism in that picture. There's so much symbolism in our, in our everyday lives. We're bombarded with this, and it's hard to break free from it and to be an everyday average thinker. But those of you that have supported me and have supported uh, the folks that put this together, uh, Jenny and Rasta, Radio Free Oklahoma City, those of you who support Deadline Ride, you support this message and getting this message out to people, uh, letting people know that it's okay to not be part of the collective, to not be a sheeple, to not just do what everybody else is doing, but to think for themselves and to question, ask questions. I mean, if you're not asking questions, what good is anything? I mean, you're taking everything for granted you might as well be 40 years old and believe that Santa Claus is leaving those presents under the tree for you and not your wife. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you have to ask questions. And in this day and age, obviously, we have to do it in a nonviolent manner. And that's where we get together in New York City at Ground Zero for the, you know, the fifth anniversary of 9-11. And, and, and we let the people that are responsible, the conspirators, know that well, we feel 9-11 was an inside job. We had evidence, the Northwoods document, that you know they wanted to kill Americans and blame it on foreign entities as a you know false flag terror events. We were able to pull that off non-violently. We're, be, we're able, to hear, to, able to sit here today, almost every single seat in the house full. Almost every single seat. I see maybe 10 empty seats. And 
we're here in a non-violent manner, and we are being activists. We're taking. You watch. How many people here saw Loose Change today before you saw it on the screen here? So almost the whole house. And how many of you are going to take the DVDs that Louder Than Words provided for us and pass those out to people, people that have never seen that before? How many of you are going to do that? So you can consider yourself activists. You have found a cause in which you have a message that you want to present to people, and this is your way to do it. And, and I'm so happy that you folks have decided to be here today. Maybe next year, Conspiracy on 2007, whether I'm up here in front of you or I'm sitting in the chair right next to you, hopefully we have even more people here or it'll be standing room only. I know they scheduled me for 45 minutes today. I'm not going to go for 45 minutes. I think I, I, I've done a well job here today for you. I appreciate you people coming out. I want you to grab any of the material up there. I mean, you if, if you are local and you live here in Oklahoma City, You've experienced one of the biggest conspiracies that's ever happened here in America with the Murrah building. Yeah. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We are sitting in the middle of Conspiracy Central that is 11, 12 years old. I mean, and, 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 and what has been done since then? You know, I really hate the mainstream media, but when you think about it, all of the facts that I have about the federal building here in Oklahoma City and 9-11 uh, come from mainstream media reports. I have mainstream media reports, actual footage of the day in April when the building went down here in Oklahoma City, the actual news reports stating that the bomb squad is in the building, they're removing more explosives as we speak. Oh my God, they just found more bombs. I mean, this went on all day long until they pinned it on their patsy. You can look that up and just go into that yourself. That's a conspiracy, folks. No way fans of us about it. 9-11, you just watched Loose Change. You saw visual, photo evidence, film evidence taken from that day from mainstream media. Mainstream media saying there's more explosives in the buildings. Bombs going off here. Bombs going off here. Bombs in the basement. I shook hands with Willie Rodriguez on September 11th of this year. A man who was a janitor at the World Trade Center for 20 years. Had a key to every door in the building. Who said, looked me right in the eye and told me there were bombs going off in the building. He was there. He's an eyewitness. We need to get this information out to people. You folks are doing a great job by being here today. I can't, I, I can't say it enough. Before I go to sleep, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, leave it up to Jenny for whoever the next guest is. But I want to thank you for being out here. My name is Rob Revere. I run a website uh, that is of the people, by the people, for the people, basically. RevereRadio.net. Uh, RevereRadioNetwork.com and this website, there's normal everyday people like yourselves who are dissenting in a non-violent manner and being activists who are taking it upon themselves to do a radio show, podcast, what have you, once a week, put it on the air, getting this information out to you. I give you the, these shows for free. Take them, download them, put them on CD, pass them out to people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny, Rostin, everybody, Chris Emery, who set this up today. I appreciate it. Jack Blood, thank you for being here. Have a good day, guys. I guess they wanted to do Q&A, which is no problem. For those of you that don't know, that's a question and answer. So if anybody has a question, go ahead and ask. Go ahead. Um, I remember listening to your uh, uh, website. I wow. Know, I don't really know exactly who it was. Oh, that's cool. But uh, they were talking about uh, this lecture that was given by some professor or someone about the uh, First World War. And I was just wondering if you could tell me perhaps who that was. Uh, I believe his name is Garen Green. He was uh, originally a host on Revere Radio Network when we first started. He's from Rhode Island. Uh, he's, he no longer does a show for me anymore, but uh, if you visit my website and send me an email, I'll be more than happy to put you in contact with him. Well, I just kind of wonder who that was that gave that lecture. It was like 
you know, like in the 50s or the 40s or something. Mm. It was like a radio. It was just an audio lecture. I'm not sure, but uh, I, war. it may have been Myron Fagan, exactly. And yeah. uh, uh, I actually have a lot of audio from uh, Myron uh, that I do play on the internet uh, on the radio network, and you probably did hear uh, some of that. Any other questions? Mike. Uh, obviously, you have it. Actually, one of the one of the original hosts of Review Radio Network, get, when I was coming up with the entire concept, uh, I'll give you just give you a little background. I I'm a geek. I played role playing games through my teenage years, and I was going to open up a card shop where I sold role playing uh, card games, collectible card games like Pokemon, Magic the Gathering. Yu-Gi-Oh, those kind of things. And, and, instead, and instead, what I did was I uh, took the advice of somebody else and started Revere Radio Network. And one of the uh, very first hosts that ever came aboard and did a show for Revere Radio Network, his name was Rex. He actually lives about two hours from me. Uh, I asked him, what should I call the network? And I, I didn't want to use my last name. I am Robert Verrier, but you can call me Rob Revere. Most people do. <laughs> Uh, and that all came from Rex. Rex gave me uh, the name and Rob Revere, and that's where I came up with Revere Radio Networks. Rob, if you were to uh, take a shot at Top three ideas, somebody new into this movement, newbies, what would you suggest? Uh, how they would step into this and they don't kind of get over their head, get overwhelmed? That's a very, very good question, Chris. Uh, somebody that's new uh, to this kind of information, as radical as it may seem, uh, may, and, and thank God for the internet, because I can't imagine what it would be like in the days of the JFK assassination to think what the JFK truth movement was like. Okay, because they didn't have the internet. So, like Holland uh, Van den Neuenhoff, they put out newsletters, they wrote books, and they did things of this nature. Uh, but what I would do, I mean, because generally most everybody has access to the internet, I would suggest that they search, you know, on Google or any of the search engines for one term, which is false flag terrorism. Once you learn the definition of false flag terrorism uh, and you see uh, where the term false flag comes from, you'll actually begin to understand that People and governments and institutions all throughout history have performed this exact same type of conspiracy and same exact type of action, uh, which, in my opinion, is to provoke fear in each and every one of you, because that's how they keep you under control. And what's really funny is I was on my way up here. You know, this is you know four o'clock this morning. Uh, two gentlemen in front of me were admiring the puffer as a TSA uh, attendant brought it to my attention that it's called. And it's a general electric machine that people walk through and it, I guess it blows wind up your skirt. <laughs> uh, but I was actually singled out to go into this. And I think I was singled out to go into it because I opened my mouth. I opened my, and, and, I, and I thought about it before I opened my mouth during an airport Think about the imams that were praying and couldn't get on the flight and this and that. You mentioned one thing about giving up a little bit of liberty for security and you get tyranny and you're going to end up with the tyranny right off the bat. And sure enough, uh, they were they were you know talking about the, the puffer machine and I said, that's the new freedom, I told them. I said, this is how they keep you under control. They keep you scared as somebody's going to get on this plane with an explosive and this is how they keep you under control. Take off your shoes, take everything off, get inside the puffer machine, let us smell you for explosives in this general electric machine. Which, obviously, I mean, if you know the term fascism, you've got corporations like General Electric merging with government institutions and, and organizations like the TSA to bring this, to, to bring this tyranny to you. And that's, what hap that's what's happening. But I would suggest, to answer your question, Chris, I would suggest that you search for the term false flag or false flag terror and you'll definitely come to a, a better understanding of why these conspiracies are created and, and, and what the ultimate goal for them are. Yes, ma'am. Do you have uh, any 
experience with the Delphi technique? No. You want to throw me in? Just that that's another a methodology that's used to basically control the way uh, conversations and meetings go. And, and uh, it's just like if people want to Google what you're talking about, Google the Delphi technique, they'll see how they are controlled in the thinking, even in a seemingly participatory fashion. I myself will look that up as soon as I get home as well, but uh, I'm, unfortunately I'm not experienced in the Delphi technique, I'm sorry. Yes, sir? I've kind of done this and wondered if you have, have you developed kind of a pat answer to the why do you do America question? Oh, why do you do America? <laughs> 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 no, go ahead, man. Come up here. Everybody, this is uh, one of the hosts from Revere Radio Network. This is Matt Conzor. He hosts the Conzor Report, which is on Thursday nights uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, man. Yeah, good yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm here from Austin, Texas. It's been a two-day part trip. The question, I believe, was uh, the hate America thing. And this is an answer that I always envision giving to, say, Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hand when they ask us if we hate, why we hate America. And they always try to, to put us in the same category as people like Ward Churchill, who, who you know, hate America and think that we got 9-11 because we deserve it. And the point that I would bring up is that people who hate America, the leftist, extreme leftist, pro-Muslim, whatever you call Ward Churchill, they buy into the official government story, and they believe that the Muslims carried out 9-11, which in my mind is a conspiracy, 19 guys in a cave carrying out a giant attack, making NORAD stand down. But they believe the official government story, and they believe that we got 9-11 because we're evil Christians, because we've, we're represented by George Bush, who's a Christian, which I don't believe, I don't know if any of you guys believe that either. Uh, Skull and Bones, 322, Moloch, and all that. But the answer that I would give to them is that if we hated America, we would sit, we would keep our mouths shut and sit back and let America be demonized in the eyes of the world as the great Satan, rather than stepping out and saying, this is false, this is not conservative, this is not Christian, this is not American. So the answer, the, the answer to the question is, we love America because we are standing up and saying this is wrong. If we hated America, we would get on the boat with Ward Churchill and say, yes, America is evil. We got what we deserve because we're evil Christians and we should all convert to the Muslim faith or atheist or whatever the new world religion is. But the answer is we love America because we're fighting this and if we hated it, we would shut up and sit down and let it happen and love it. Any other questions for Rob here? Right. He who casts the votes decides nothing. He who counts the votes decides everything. That was stated by Joseph Stalin. And yes, I have to agree with that. And once again, I, you know, I'm experiencing that where I live. Okay, I live uh, probably about a half hour away from Sarasota, which is the 13th district. And we have Kathleen Jennings, a Democrat who lost by under 400 votes, and a Democrat, or a, a, the Republican. Uh, and I can't remember his name, who, who won. Anyway, they've, recal they've gone through and they've done these audits on these voting machines. And uh, there were, I guess there were like 18,000 votes that weren't even, that didn't even have a vote cast in this particular race, but for all the other ones it did. So there may have been some discrepancy, but I've watched how they've gone through this, uh, this process here and, and uh, the auditing that they've done at these voting machines, they're not even using the same machines that were used in the, in, in, in the actual election. They're using machines that, where they replicate what ha could have happened in the election with machines that weren't even used. So I mean, obviously, the election is controlled. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do about that but get that information out to people that you need to understand that these voting machines that are made by these corporations and who these corporations are actually in bed with, and you can do this, you know, do this research yourself, find out who these corporations are in bed with and how close knit ties and good old boy network that it truly is. And you'll see that these votes are, these new voting machines are made uh, to swing the vote. Code can be entered in there at any time 
code has been entered in the original source code. Can't remember the gentleman's name from Florida, as a matter of fact. Stood before the court, sworn under oath, and stated that he was uh, paid to actually uh, create a code that would swing the vote 5149 the other way. So, I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions, uh, and, I, and such an evil man, I'd hate to agree with him, but he's absolutely correct. He who casts the votes decides nothing. The guy that counts the votes, they decide everything. Good thing to watch for that is uh, just go to Google Video and watch Hacking Democracy. Hacking Democracy was an HBO uh, special uh, with Bev Harris uh, from blackboxvoting.org, which is a good website to visit for more info on that. Yeah? Yeah, I just want to say, um, uh, what's your opinion? Because obviously, if the mainstream media would do their job, then, then you wouldn't, wouldn't have had to uh, uh, create Revere Radio. But it's you people like it. you. It's, it's people like you that have actually created Revere Radio Network. All I did, with, all I had to do was say, here I am, here's what I'm doing. I did a show once a week and played Alex Jones 24-7 the rest of the time. And people heard me and they said, hey, how can I do this as well? And they came to me. It wasn't even called Revere Radio Network. There wasn't even a website. I just so happened to be doing this just as a hobby and as a way to get my point across and to be able to be an activist in some sort of way. It's hard for me to leave on a Saturday night and go down uh, downtown St. Petersburg in Florida and hold up signs in the, in the uh, anti-Iraq war protests that they have every Saturday night when I have five boys at home, the only day that I have off work and they want to be with me. So how can I get my message out and how can I be heard and how can I dissent and be an activist in a nonviolent manner if I can't go down there and hold up signs with the rest of these guys and this is this is where the mutation and the evolution of Revere Radio Network came from and if it wasn't for 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 all of you out there that listen and all of you that have participated and actually uh, and actually do shows or have donated money to keep Revere Radio Network on the air you were the ones like I said before uh, and I, I intend on putting my middle fingers in the air today, but there's kids in here, and I just want to be nice. But you are the ones that have had your middle fingers in the air. So it's as simple as that. And I can't thank you any, any, any more than that. All right, good job, Rob. Thank you. That was excellent. Exceeded expectations. So. Not that I had low expectations. <laughs> <laughs> we move on from that. Okay, um, we're almost back on schedule here. We were running a little late, but I think we're, uh, I guess I won't mess with that anymore, so I'm not having any luck with it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We've got Sheila Cox coming up next to speak, but uh, first off, I wanted to show a little bit of a film that I've always seen myself one time. It's called Truth Be Told. And it's all about this new NAFTA corridor that's uh, being planned and implemented already in uh, Texas, and it's on its way here. Uh, it's, it's mapped to come through Oklahoma, and Kansas City, and all the way to Can uh, Canada, all over the place they haven't planned, and it's a really scary thing, and it's, uh, I'm going to let the speaker give all the inside information about it. But, so I've seen a little bit of this film. The film's long, it's like two hours long, but they cut it up into like 30 minute segments. So I was thinking maybe we'd watch a little bit of it. Maybe we'll watch 30 minutes. Maybe we won't. I don't know, I'm just kind of playing by ear here. So um, we're gonna 